Sunday morning at 9.40, Sunday school, 11 a.m., Sunday morning worship. Greater Liberty members, please be sure to fill out the update member forms. If you are interested in liturgical dance, please stay after morning worship for a few minutes and see Sister Taria or Sister Dama Lazum. Today at 5 p.m., Lord's Supper. Tuesday, January 9th, Church Anniversary Committee will meet at 6 p.m. This Tuesday at 6 p.m. Wednesday, January the 10th, 6.15 prayer meeting, 7 o'clock Bible study. Saturday, January the 20th, church business meeting, business of importance at 10 a.m. Sunday, January the 24th, installation of all 2024 officers service at 11. Each officer is asked to wear black. Please continue to keep all of our sick and shut in and bereaved families in your prayers. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of our pastor and our first lady and Great Liberty Missionary Baptist Church family, we would like to welcome our visitors. Please feel free to come back and worship with us at any time. Thank you. Oh, 
Lord, you are welcome.
Good morning, church. Lord, welcome in this place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I came to read the scripture and say the prayer. I'll be reading John, the third chapter. The reason I chose this song, I mean, this scripture, the last time. I read the scripture. Now, Louise was sitting right over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow would be one year my God, my God. since she passed. Yeah. Yeah. And God has been so good to me. In the scripture read, there was a man of a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The, king, the saint came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art the teacher come from God. No man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. That's, I read the first three verses of chapter three. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, O oh precious Lord up above, I want to thank you. Thank you, thank you for this day, a day I've never seen before and a day I'll never see again. And O oh Heavenly Father, forgive me of all my sins. And then, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being so kind, so mercy, and so understanding to your people. And then, Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on that man, woman, boy, or girl that's out there in the world and don't know you in the pardon of their sins. Let them hear the word. And let the word get in them, get on them, and all about them, that they might come running asking, what must I do to be saved? And then, Heavenly Father, have mercy. Have mercy on my pastor, his wife and children by his side. Be with Brother Young 
and his wife and children by his side. And oh, Heavenly Father, give them all the blessings they stand in need of. And then, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For my two daughters, Rose and Kim and LaDonna. For they have been with me every step of the way. And I also want to thank you for my friends, Greg Wright and Betty Wright. They've been right there with me ever since the day that Mother Louise died. It hasn't been a day that they asked me, do you need something? All I need, Jesus to just bless me. That's all I need is God to bless me. Hold me and fill me. Give me the blessings I stand in need of. And then, Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you. Thank you, thank you for your darling son, Jesus, who came down through 40 and two generations, suffered, bled, and died, that we may have the right to the tree of life. And then, Heavenly Father, when I have done all that you have assigned my hands to do, please receive me somewhere around your peaceful kingdom. These and all blessings I ask in your son Jesus' name and ask it all. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Are there any true worshipers in the house on today? Okay. Before Jesus revealed himself to the woman at the well, the question was asked, and The Father is looking for true worshipers, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So I'm going to ask you the question just one more time. Are there any true worshipers in the house on today that don't mind worshiping God in spirit and in truth? truth you know when you worship God things happen when you worship God breakthroughs take place when you worship God miracles take place when you worship God healing takes deliverance takes place when you worship one more time are there any true worshipers in the house this morning. Amen. Yes, sir. My God, my God. Everyone, please stand up. Leaning on the Lord.
more time. We come this far by faith. Just the other day, I heard a man say he didn't believe. mission statement. Our mission is to reach the world abroad, teaching them the infallible gospel of God's grace through his darling son, Jesus Christ, and the truth unto salvation. Good morning, church. Good morning. It's now time for our offering. <clears throat> the box to the far left of me is the tie box. The box in front of me is a missionary offering. The little church right here is the pastor's anniversary. Ministers and deacons come at this time, please. And with the people left in the annex stand and follow the direction of the usher, please. Rest of the annex stand and follow the direction of the usher, please. Here we go, 
for I'm looking for a miracle I'm looking in the back of this stand for our direction of us to please. to the sanctuary stand for our direction of dusting, please. Keep in the center of the sanctuary stand for our direction of Dustin, please. People right at the sanctuary stand for our direction of the usher, please.
Let us pray. Look at God. Look at God. <coughs> our Father and our God, oh, how we thank you. Oh, how we thank you. Father God, we thank you. But it's often has been taken up for our kingdom. Father God, we thank you for the gift. We thank you for the giver. These blessings, we thank you. In your darling son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
everybody all over the church for the Lord our God. Yes, the Lord our God. Yes, the Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God. The Lord our God. Come on, y'all, Joe.
Sufficient is his grace. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and eternal is his love. We serve a God who is deserving. Of all our praise. Worthy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm not talking about having an emotional experience. Yes, sir. Come on. Watch out, I'm talking about having a conscious awareness, a conscious understanding of what great things he has done. I'm talking about where you worship out of your spirit. I'm talking about that worship that ain't for any shape, form, or fashion. That worship that ain't to show you that I love God, but to to show God I love God. That comes from a different place. That, that type of worship ain't sprung by emotion. It's not sprung by somebody pumping you up. The music don't have to be right. <laughs> They could have the wrong person leading. Yeah, yeah. It don't matter who's there, who ain't. There you go, there you go. Because you entered into his house with thanksgiving. Yeah. 
and his courts with praise. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Worship was in your spirit when you woke up. Yes, oh, yeah. With a mind and a will yes, to come to God's house this morning. Yeah. To receive what thus saith the Lord. It's good to be here. This first Sunday of 2024. Happy New Year to the saints of God. We thank God for his divine providence. We thank him for being a, a shield, shielding us from danger seen and unseen. We thank him for the good days and the bad. For through it all, even when I wavered, <laughs> Even when my faith wavered, yeah, yeah. God remained faithful. Always, always. We give him glory this morning. I want to jump right in because I don't know how long I'm going to be. Turn with me to 2 Timothy. Chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I, I want to look at verse, at verse 9, Paul's second letter to Timothy, chapter 1, and verse 9. Second Timothy chapter one in verse nine. Are we there? The scripture reads, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Amen. Beloved, I know I have to be. I try to be careful when preaching texts like this because they, they're so meaty and weighty. And I know that your attention ain't but that show. <laughs> <clears throat> and I could spend all day in this text. But in the interest of time, I'm going to do my best, Greg Smith, <laughs> to just give you a couple of bites off this old bone. Saved according to his purpose and grace. Beloved, Paul here in this second letter to Timothy is exhorting Timothy to keep on keeping on. He told Timothy in verse 6 to stir up the gift of God. He said, I already know what's in you. First, I know who your mama and your grandmama is. <laughs> I know where you're from. I know what you was brought up under. 
And then on top of that, you've been under my wing, my teaching. I've laid my hands on you. But I need you to not lie dormant or become complacent. I need you to stir up that gift. I need you to keep moving. I need you to not get discouraged. And I need you most of all to never be ashamed of the gospel. Never be ashamed of this truth that has been revealed unto us. Child of God, it is, it's necessary for us. It's necessary for us. I, I, churches, I, I don't know, and pastors feed off of it. and They feel like they have to prime you for it but they get caught up in emotionalism in corporate worship just telling the brother in our new members class that part of the reason why I instituted new members class is because I don't want members to join because they had an emotional experience They wouldn't come in here, oh, they had worship up in Greater Liberty. Ooh, it was on fire now. And that pastor show was good. And he spoke to me right where I was today. I just don't want you to have an emotional experience and join to a body and you don't know what we believe or where we stand. You don't know me from Adam. You just thought I was good that day that you happened to came. The thing is, what you don't know is we have high praise worship every week. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> it wasn't just on that Sunday. And it ain't because we trying to impress you. But it's because we know what the Lord has done. child of God I believe that we can't get so caught up in emotionalism and high praise and worship that we forsake doctrine and truth and this was one of the things that Paul was telling his son in the ministry and he was reminding him of the gospel he gave him a summary in verses 9 and 10 of the gospel and he's basically telling him to hold fast to this. Hold, hold fast to this truth. And, and you know, I, I think that brothers shine or they shy away from, I should say, the, the truth of the gospel because it's not popular. It's no longer popular to tell the truth on God. People don't want to hear that. People just want you to speak to their emotions. That's what they want. And the crazy thing is, beloved, is when you think back in those days of the early church, they had to hide to have worship. Y'all not hearing me. They had to hide. They had to do it in secret because if they did it openly, they were subject to persecution, arrest, or even death. Now, you think they were putting their lives on the line to go in the woods to get their emotions fed? Is that what you think? I'm not putting my life on the line for you to tell me how to deal with the girl at work. I'm not doing that. 
But you know what? I'll put my life on the line for a man named Jesus. I'll put my life on the line if you come in to tell if I'm coming in here and you come in to tell me about a man who was born, about a man who bled, suffered, and died that I might live. They came together for truth, for doctrine. Y'all remember a while back when I told you I wonder how many folk would come if all we did was have preaching on Sunday morning. Y'all remember that? I think we went through about six months of that too, didn't we? <laughs> we still had high praise. Child of God, truth and doctrine matters. And just because people don't want to hear truth and doctrine today, they don't want to hear it because truth and doctrine makes you say ouch. Truth and doctrine forces you to look at yourself instead of just accepting yourself. That's what truth and doctrine does. So when people give truth and people don't like the truth, they go somewhere else where somebody's just going to feed fables. It's where they go. It's what they do. That's, what, that's the society that we live in. But thank God that God still has some pastors after his own heart. Thank God for Paul. And thank God for pastors like Paul pouring into young preachers like Timothy. So therefore he told Timothy in verse 9, who hath saved us. And called us with a holy calling. We think about salvation. You know, it's funny. Because, see, when we think about salvation, beloved, I want you to think about why some come and some don't. I want you to picture, if you just indulge me for just a moment. Imagine a courthouse, and on the outside of the courthouse, all the sinners are congregated, just sinners, just me and you, outside. On the inside, on the judgment seat, sits God, and God <laughs> bids all sinners to come in for pardon. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. He calls all sinners to come in, and he bids them all to come in for pardon. Now, the reality is, not all of them come, do they? They all heard the same welcome, the same bid, the same call, but not all of them come. I wonder why that is. See, these are the kind of people that are outside. These are the folk that are outside. Y'all with me? You got some that ain't coming because they don't recognize themselves as sinners. But the jury is already out. Ain't no trial. You a sinner. The verdict is in. When he said and come in, he's talking about come in for sentencing. When you stand before God, you standing there for sentencing. You, you ain't there to determine whether you a saint or a sinner. You already a sinner. But there are just some folk out there, they heard the call, but you know what? He ain't talking to me. He ain't talking to me. Some ain't coming because they don't recognize themselves as sinners. They're not that bad. They some good. They, I'm, I'm pretty good. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't need that much saving. 
And then there's some that ain't coming because, you know, some folk just belong to the devil. You do know the devil has demons. He has minions. And believe it or not, some folk might be one up in here. Were created to be devils. And some are just devils. Some are just devils and some don't even recognize themselves as a sinner. And then you got another group that ain't coming because they would rather earn their pardon. Because you told them to just come and receive the pardon and they're like, no, that don't seem right. I did this right here, your honor. I did that right here. You should pardon me. I got good behavior. Some ain't coming because of the method of the pardon. Under what pretenses the pardon is given. And then you got this other group. Who says, here I am, Lord. I surrender. Whatever you say, whatever you got, whatever is the answer, however, which way you're going to cover it, here I am. And those are the ones that come on in the door. Now, but the question is, what made them different? Is it because they were smart? Were they any different than the one who couldn't see themselves as a sinner? Were they any different than the one who, 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 who wanted to earn their way in? How? Some of y'all got the same mama. How are you any different from the boy you raised in the same household? What made you come? You came because you saw yourself as a sinner. What made you see? Hold on to that question. Beloved, I believe in the sovereignty of God. I do. I believe God rules and he super rules. I believe God is alpha. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. Everything begins with him. Everything comes from him. God is everything. He's everything. Anything that was made was made by him. Child of God, when we think about who God is and why people come in his sovereignty, What Paul is teaching in this text is that the only ones that come is who receive this specific calling. This specific calling. See, there is a general call. I told you everybody was out the door, outside. There's a general call to all mankind, every man, woman, boy, and girl to come under unto repentance. It's a general call. But you know what? I remember when Jesus said in Matthew 22 that many are called, but few are chosen. And see that chosen few, when we ask, well, where did the chosen come from? The chosen came in verse 9 of chapter 1 from this holy calling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. An effectual call. In other words, it was a call that inflicted change. And that's why you responded. Beloved, this call it's, it's a holy calling. It's a high and heavenly call. Where, 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 where the principles of grace and holiness are, are imputed and imparted to you. 
They're, they're imparted by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit. In other words, when God, when Christ told Nicodemus that no one can see the kingdom of heaven unless you be born again. Born of the spirit. The regeneration and washing of your very soul. Child of God, I need you to know and understand that this regeneration didn't take place when you came up here and gave your hand to the pastor. It didn't take place when you got dipped in water. It didn't take place when you said, here I am. It took place before any of that happened. Before you said, here I am. Before you said, I believe. Before you said, I love the Lord. Jesus had already said, come unto me. And gave you an ear. To hear the voice of the resurrection. God by his Holy Spirit must make you alive. You do know you a dead thing. Yeah you are. You was a dead thing. Dead in trespasses and sins. Dead under the condemnation of your, of your federal head Adam. Child of God we were born dead. And a dead thing, last time I checked, can't choose to do nothing. Speak to that chair and tell it to move. Better don't go nowhere. Go to the cemetery and tell them to go get you a drink of water. I bet you they still lay there. But child of God, when the Holy Spirit moves and makes you alive, as when God told the prophet to prophesy to these dry bones. <laughs> And the bones started to form and come together and the sinews and the cartilage and the muscle and the strands and the tendons all started to form and flesh and skin all started to form until that thing became a living soul. But child of God, it takes the spirit of God to begin a good work in you. Otherwise, you will never come. Child of God, it's a holy calling. It's an effectual calling. And I like that it says that salvation is his plan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that because it says, it says according to his purpose. Salvation was God's plan. He, he, he is the author of it. It originated with him. He purposed to redeem man. It originated with him for his own purpose and glory. And you know what else it emphasizes in the text? It emphasizes in the text that man had nothing to do with it. It emphasizes man's absence of anything on his part, of any merit on his part, because it says that it wasn't according to our works. You receive this call unto salvation simply because of God's purpose and his glory. That's the only reason, because God was pleased to call you. Not because you were so nice, not because you were so cute and kind, not because people think you're so wonderful and giving and because you're so loving, but God in eternity past went through and started picking names. He went through and started writing down names, generations after generations. And you know what he did? After he called them, he placed them all in his son. And the Bible tells us he did that. Before the world was. Before you were thought of. So how could it be of works? Your time ain't even come. There ain't even no sun, moon, and stars yet. There, 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 there ain't nothing yet. And your name was already in this Lamb Book of Life. Ah, child of God. He purposed to save you. 
before the foundation of the world. When I look in Ephesians chapter 1, he reminds us of how according as he has chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. I know right now that's bothering some of y'all because it's challenging your free will understanding. I know it is. But child of God, I need you to understand that your will is only so free. Your will is actually a slave. <laughs> you like what you told me? I don't know about I do what I want to do. No, you do what's in your heart to do. <laughs> you, 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 you do what's in you to do. And if God ain't in you, you can never do anything that is of God or that is pleasing to God. I know it may look like something good on the surface to you and I and to the naked eye of man, but we don't know no better. You know, we just as messed up as you are, but God knows the heart. And the thing is, you can't do anything good without a proper motive. And your motive must be first derived from faith. And your motive must also be to give God glory. Otherwise, what you did was just a relative good work, and it wasn't a good work unto God yes, are you with me yeah. child of God when we think about this it's nothing on the part of man to save himself it's nothing on the part of man in other words Paul said in my flesh he found no good thing there's nothing good in any of us. There's nothing to warrant God even taking time and being mindful of us. But thank God for grace. Thank God for grace. Because look at what, look at what grace did. Grace removed guilt and sin and in removing guilt and sin there's no longer a reason for you to be ashamed of anything I, 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 don't, I don't care how bad you are what people know about you where you've been where you haven't been what you've done Beloved, there's no shame in this gospel. Yes, sir. How can you have shame before men when you're in Christ Jesus? Yeah. Because when you're in Christ Jesus, you know they ain't no better than you were. Yeah. Come on. You know they were as bad off as you were. Yeah. You know they deserve the same fate that you deserve. Yeah. So they can't, they ain't got a heaven or a hell to put you in. So why are you so worried about what they think about you? If you're worried about what somebody thinks about you, you ought to be worried about what God says about you. Who cares what man got to say? Who cares about what man says about what you do, where you go, how you live? But beloved, I want God to be pleased with me. I want God to say, well done, thy faithful servant. I want God to look at me and be pleased with how I love my wife, how I love my children, how I serve in the kingdom, how I live my life, how I operate on my job. I want God to be pleased with me. I ain't worried about pleasing you. Don't you know if one day at a time, if I just work and do the best I can to please God, I know my wife will be thoroughly pleased. I know my job, my boss will be thoroughly pleased. I know my friends, even though they might not like what I got to say all the time, they will come back around because baby, my heart is always lined up. Child of God, you got to have something. He removes the shame. He reminds Paul, he reminds Timothy of this. That's when he said, don't be ashamed of the testimony of the gospel. In other words, stand on it. 
in confidence because anything else is slippery ground. Stand on the truth of the gospel. Stand on your salvation. And child of God, I don't care what anybody else tells you. If it ain't by grace, you on a slippery slope. If, you ain't, if, it, if it ain't by grace, it's on sinking sand. If it ain't by grace, the big bad wolf can come by and he can huff and he can puff and he can blow your whole life down. Expose all of your nakedness, raise your skirt up, give you shame among men, make you become a hermit and not want to show your face, make you not be like you can serve God or love your family. But beloved, if you are grounded in the truth of the gospel that I am saved by grace through faith and that not of myself, for it is the gift of God. It was given to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because see, if I'm saved by grace, you can point out all my dirt. If I'm saved by grace, you can talk all you want. I'm on a solid foundation. I may sway. I may bend. But I stay firm yes, ah, on the goodness of the Lord. Yes, Ooh, I'm trying to hold myself. Yes, but child of God, I got to move on. But this grace gives us confidence in an assured salvation. And the good thing about it is also is that God did it. God did it all. And the thing is, beloved, in coming under the grace of God, it's a humbling experience. Because like I said, we was on the outside. And when he called for sinners and the spirit has shown you what you are, it's a humbling thing, ain't it? When you know that joker over there, Definitely ain't better than you are. And they think they don't need this Jesus or this grace. And you got to swallow your pride and say I am nothing. My education can't save me. My money and my riches can't save me. My popularity and my talents can't save me. So therefore, I'm going to swallow this pill of pride and I'm going to come just like I am. Broken, weary and wounded, sick and sore. And I'm coming to Jesus just like I am. It's a humbling experience and it's crazy that this grace of God can make man so humble and yet at the same time it makes man glad this grace of God can make man as low as the mercy seat but at the same time cause him to feel so high he can look man in the face with his chin raised all the way up it's amazing how this grace of God can take the lowest things of life and obeys the wise. It's crazy how God can take broken things and raise them up to do great works. God did it. He's telling us that God, he did it all. And beloved, I don't know about y'all, but I stand with Jonah today. When he said that salvation is of the Lord. You ain't have no part in it. You didn't do anything about it. It wasn't your choice, but it was God's choice. If God didn't, I remember when DJ Ward said, if God didn't choose some, then heaven would have none. But child of God, I'm so glad that back in eternity past, that God made a decision 
within himself that he would save some people because God would have been all God and God would have been still holy and God would have still been righteous and loving and wonderful and marvelous even if he decided to leave man to his own self to leave all mankind to damnation but thank God for the love of God that he decided to save some. He decided to not leave some of us to ourselves. Hallelujah. For child of God, in this calling, I need you to understand that no one is called who God didn't purpose to call. Anyone that is called, it's because God had purposed them. You do remember when Jesus said that all that the Father has given me, they shall come to me. And he said, I will raise them up in the last day. And he repeated himself again. This is John chapter 6 if you want to go read it. But he repeated himself again and said, I declare once again, All that the Father has given me, they will come to me. And this time he said, I won't lose none of them. Child of God, I need you to know and understand that what this Jesus performed in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection, he performed a very specific death. He performed a very specific and completed a very specific task a specific ministry to bring about the salvation of his church. Because if I last time I checked in John chapter 10, Jesus said, I lay my life down for the sheep. For my sheep, they know my voice and they will follow me. And no other voice will they follow. I remember when Jesus also said, when in, in Ephesians 5, Paul penned, he said, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. I need you to understand that Jesus dying on the cross, Jesus being born in the fullness of time, that it was 100 percent that he fulfilled every purpose for the reason he had come he didn't come to do half the job he didn't come in hopes that somebody will choose him he didn't come to offer you salvation he came to give salvation he didn't come to make a way for you to be saved he came to save you he didn't come to to offer you to come but he said i give myself to you child of God he said for God so loved me that he gave me his only son that if I believe in him and confess with my mouth that I shall not die but that I will have eternal life I don't know about you but I'm just crazy enough to believe God at his word Hallelujah. He purposed to call you. I'm going to get out of here. But child of God, if he purposed it, he brought it to pass. For whom he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And who he predestined He called. And who he called, he justified. And who he justified, he glorified. Beloved, I'm glad today that God had a mind to save some. For in the counsel of his own will, a counsel of peace was formed. In the counsel of his own will, a covenant of grace was made between God and himself. In the counsel of his own will, 
a promise of life was given in the counsel of his own will persons were fixed upon persons was chosen to be saved and beloved and a savior was appointed and in the fullness of time a man born of a woman was born under the law to redeem man unto himself the bible says that blessings of grace and favor was put into the hands of my jesus and in the fullness of time he executed the eternal purpose of god's will the timing was his the method was his it was all determined by God himself and I'm glad today that there was no power there was no principalities there was no other gods that could thwart the will of Jehovah but if God said it then it shall be done if God moves then things will no longer be as they were but I thank God from Zion that he didn't leave us to himself but that he commended to us his love for us by dying in Christ Jesus I'm glad today that in all of my sins that I have committed that I've omitted and that I was born under the good Good news is I never belong to Satan because before the foundation of the world I belong to the Lord ain't the Lord all right I know it does not appear right now what I shall be but what you don't know is that at his appearing we shall see him as he is and we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we shall become fully and wholly what we shall be when you look at me now I know that I'm saved and I know that I'm being saved but I'm also holy righteous right now in the name of Jesus because what he fulfilled in the righteousness of Christ fulfilling the law satisfying God's judgment he placed on me and now I'm walking down hell but I got a new coat on that's why my brothers and sisters that I used to run with they're jealous of me because they recognize me but they don't recognize my coat they don't recognize what's on my back they don't recognize the righteousness that's now in my heart and why I walk the way I walk why I talk the way I talk but I've been changed by the blood of the lamb won't he do it created me a clean heart and give me a new spirit won't he do it won't he do it I'm saved by the grace of God I'm saved according to his will for his purpose for his glory so don't you worry about it because the suffering of this present time is not to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed God's going to get some glory out of your life he's going to get some glory out of your storms out of your struggles let them talk about you that just means God got something good on the other side give me a bad doctor's report that just means 
once I come out of the storm, I won't look like what I've been through. Ain't the Lord all right? You don't know like I know. Hey! I'm saved. I'm saved. And you know what? You can't keep me from praising my God. You can't keep me from shouting hallelujah. You can't stop me from doing my dance because God saved a wretch like me. Oh, wretched man that I am who can deliver me from the body of this death. But I'm glad, I'm glad there is therefore now no, no condemnation if God be for me. just get happy of being saved because the world is ugly and life is going to continue to happen and when life happens don't think that God left don't think that God has abandoned you don't think there is no God but you are still a stranger and an alien in this land and whatever God decrees to happen down here, he's justified. But it does not matter. Take my life, take my home, take my job, rob my children, take my money, take my reputation, take my dignity. I'm still, I'm still, as long as I got breath, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise will be in my mouth I'm going to choose God I'm going to love him I'm going to praise him I'm going to worship him he's been too good he's been too good he's been so good Saved. Saved. Is anybody happy? Just for being saved. I know it's hard. I know you don't even like your job. I know you don't like who you work with. I know your children get on your nerves. I know your money is funny. I know you don't even feel like serving like you serve, but you know what? Salvation is a motivator, ain't it? When you know who you are, when you know what you are, when you know what you deserve, and you realize he did it anyhow, he did it anyway. I was a hog in the hog pit. And he did it anyway. He should have left me hogging. He should have left me eating slop. He should have left me in the mud. But thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Hallelujah. And you know what? I can't cry because he didn't save you. I'm just going to be rejoiceful that he saved me. I hope he saves you. I pray he saves you. I preach because I want him to save you. But if he doesn't, thank God that he saved me. Mm. I know this sounds selfish. 
But you know what? I wasn't saved in a group. And I'm not going to glory in a group. I'm going to glory all by myself. I did my dirt all by myself. Mama can't save me. Daddy can't save me. Big mama can't save me. The pastor can't save me. But Jesus, Jesus, look past my faults. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Yeah. saved that's why you can't touch me <clears throat> wasting your time and your energy I'm saved start making decisions and making choices doing things because of your salvation that ought to be your motivating factor if we operate under that because if you really have joy in your salvation then everything that you do every decision you make how you love your wife how you run your home your children, how you, how you act and carry yourself in your social clubs and on your job and everything that you do, you will want God to be pleased with it. You will want God to be pleased. Forget about, you know, don't cuss, don't drink, don't smoke and all that. Forget about all that. All that stuff that religion tell you all the time. Stop yeah. But if you love God and you love your neighbor, hmm, and everything you do is trying to please God. Because see, if not, then you will treat people based on how they treat you. That's what you'll do. You'll go to your job based on how you feel like they're going to treat you and do you that day on your job. That's how you're going to respond and that's what's going to govern how you work and what effort you put in. That's not, that's not God-like. That's not Christ-like. Yeah, I know that girl don't like you on your job. I know your boss gives you a hard time, but you, it, but you ought to go in there with thanksgiving that you have a job and a means to take care of your home. Don't you know that if we operate like we love God, situations that are not benefiting for you, God will elevate you above. If you're in a situation where he knows people ain't for you, but if you can still operate like you love God, like you belong to God, God will elevate you past that. God will remove stuff. Because God will honor you. He'll honor you. Because you honor in him. But if you're going to just act like they do, he's going to leave you right there. I'm going to leave you right where you at. Wondering why you can't get promoted. Because you don't know how to talk. You can't keep your emotions and your attitude in check. Because you know, to be in management, you got, 
you gotta have be able to tame your tongue. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cause you represent the company now. Come on, come on. So just cause that employee cussed you out don't mean you can cuss them back. But you can't do that. You ain't strong enough yet. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Sing, quiet. invite you to come to Jesus today. I'm the herald of that was sent by God from the judgment seat. Coming to all sinners saying, come in. Come on in for pardon. Come in for to be redeemed. To be reconciled. I promise you, he already knows what you did. He already knows who you are. And he still bids you. Come on. I know where you was at last night. I know where you came from this morning. But I want you to come. My love will cover your sins. For there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And he'll wash you in that blood and make you white as snow. be the glory I pray that you've been blessed today I pray that you are that your heart was filled by God allowing you to experience this worship experience today I pray that God bless you in 2024 I pray that God increases you in 2024. That he continues to prosper you. I see we getting off to a good start already because I see how Tatum back there. Beloved. Praise God. God bless you, darling. Amen. I see her. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Child of God is. I also want to invoke your the prayers of the saints as well. To not only continue to pray for all of our sick and shut in, but you continue to pray for Deacon Bill Logan <clears throat> who went back into the hospital a couple of days ago. Um, I believe he was sick with some type of virus or something. Um, infection. I want you to keep him in your prayers. Are they allowing visitors for him yet? Mama Gwen was telling me they weren't allowing visitors. But I want you all to be praying for Brother Logan, pray for Sister Gwen by his side that God will strengthen him and restore his strength and God will just continue to be a covering for him and 
You know, God will, God can allow us to live with thorns in our flesh. And he can allow us to deal and live with them for a long time without ever removing them. And he still will say, my grace is sufficient. My grace is sufficient. So we're going to keep him in our prayers. Also pray that you will pray for Brother Lorenzo Mosby, his mother, Miss Maddie Mosby. He had to take to the hospital. I ask that you will keep her lifted in your prayer. And then also Sister Janae Case, continue to keep her lifted. Um, got a praise report for Sister Gertie Richardson. I don't know who all she told. And also Mama Gwen, Christopher. She over, she looking at me. But I got some good news about both of them that their cancer is in remission. I know y'all can do better than that, Brother Lippy. Praise God, praise God. I was so, so, so happy to hear that and get that news from both of them. You know, they are both so faithful to this body. We just thank God for his, for his provision. God is true to his word. Amen. He's true to his word. Um, I want you to continue praying for uh, the family of Sister Martin, Geraldine Martin. We will be laying her to rest on Friday the 12th. That is the 12th, right? This coming Friday. We will be laying her to rest here at Greater Liberty on this coming Friday. So we ask that, I ask that you continue to keep her family in, your, in our prayers. Um, and uh, Gus, that's your grandmother, right? Amen, brother. We're, we're praying for you as well, keeping you in our prayers as well. Amen. And then I'll, if y'all could also help me wish uh, Brother Reggie Case and Brother Ronald Woolfolk a happy birthday. Amen. Your, your, your birthday was Friday, right? Were you 45? You done caught me. You caught me by now. That's right. And also Brother Woolfolk. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But now nah, I love you with the love of Christ. Come back and meet us here again tonight at 5 o'clock. We don't have baptism, but we are going to serve the Lord's table. And we're going to fellowship in. We have a new member to fellowship in. Brother Black, who's sitting back here, Sister Elena's husband, completed our new members class. We'll be fellowshipping him in this afternoon. Come back and join us as we go to the Lord's table at 5 o'clock. Standing all over the building. Yes, ma'am. Say that again. Brother Tatum, you got a mic? Get somebody run a mic up right to him. Hurry up, Ryan. The, the green one. It's the green one, Gav. <laughs> you is slow. Hurry up. One thing. God, I'm glad to be back home. Amen. Amen. And then uh, I think y'all know my sister, my oldest sister, Sonia Mitchell, died. Yeah. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. And I just want to say thank you for everything, God. Because God, without you, I'm nobody. Amen. But with you, God, I'm somebody. Yeah. I wanted to come the last Sunday of the year, but me and my sister got things wrong in there. That's all right now. I don't blame her. I just want to say thank you, Lord. I want to pray for everybody in this whole wide world. Take care of every man, woman, boy, and girl. And Lord, I was, you told me to tell us to take care of the little bitty babies, Lord, in this world. 
and I just want to say thank you. And then, Lord, when this old world can't hold me no more, I'm coming home. I'm going home one day to, to be with the Lord. And I want to thank you. Everything Greater Living had done for me. I want to thank the pastors and everybody. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. May his countenance continue to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. Go in the name of Christ. Sister Beverly Ross. Boo got sick. Her, her daughter Boo. Michelle. Not, Michelle. Okay. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Thank you.